Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to go back to April 29th and April 30th of 2021. What happened on that day? Well, that was my first Bassmaster Open that I fished. And I was not a good tournament. Um, it did not go well, but I still want to go back and talk about that with you guys and go over where I fished and how I caught those fish, what I did wrong, what I could have done better. A lot of things in there. Okay, so let's get into that. Before I get into that, if you guys are not a member, I'm probably going to get some new uh, guys watching this because I'm reaching out to some other areas of the country. If you are not, if you're new to the channel, if you guys would just subscribe to my channel. That helps the channel, helps us grow, lets me know the people. I've had a lot of uh, feedback on my videos. A lot of people are really enjoying the content, and I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying that, guys. I love talking fish, and I could, I could do this for hours. I can talk for days here on YouTube. That, that's why I'm doing so many videos here is because I'm getting the feedback, and I love hearing that feedback from you guys, and I just love to talk fishing. And then if you guys would like the video and any comments you guys have, comment on the videos. That helps get them up there in the suggested videos and get it out there on YouTube. We've really taken a large increase. I believe it's up to like 4,000% in the last 28 days in subscribers wise. So that is awesome guys. I appreciate it. Okay. So let's dig into this. This was the Bassmaster Open on Pickwick Lake, um, April 29th and April 30th of 2021. I know we're going back a ways here, but I want to talk about this tournament because it was my first Bassmaster event I had ever fished. The first one was supposed to be on Lewis Smith uh, in Alabama, but it got canceled because of high water. So now the first one was Pickwick here. So I went to Pickwick and I practiced there and I'm going to break it down for you guys exactly what went down here. <clears throat> okay. So it was post-spawn. I knew they were going to be in post-spawn. I knew there was probably going to be some still on beds from the water temperature. I can't remember. I think it got up to 70 while I was down there. And I everything I kind of learned about from the Tennessee River, I was at Pickwick back in 2006 or 2007, many years ago. But we took out of Florence and stood out of Coons, Tennessee. We took out of Florence back then. And it was a, I was super bass invitation or super bass championship, I do believe, years ago. And I, we, we locked into Wilson because it was right there. It wasn't as far away. We didn't get much figured out up the river. I was still young. I was in high school. I was 17 years old then when I did that. So um, it didn't really matter what went on there. So I was just kind of starting new, never been there really. So a lot of things I read was they pull out pretty quick on that river. And everybody talked about ledges, you know, ledges, 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 ledges. But I didn't really know what a ledge was because I'd never been there. So I never experienced what to look for. So I went into there. The game plan for me was to fish points because I kind of seen, you know, if I could hit all these points, you know, I could at least scrape up a limit. So I kind of looked through there and that that's, as you can see, kind of the pattern I followed because I didn't know much about the river and the ledges. I wish I could go back. Now I do understand ledges more and do it all over again, but that time will come in the future. I'll get another shot at that. So the first place that I found and I fished this, this is, was my first stop. This first picture here. This was my, well, let's talk about the three or the two primary areas first. Um, Bear Creek was my, really my primary area. And then I, that's where I caught the most fish at. And then there was Yellow Creek, which runs down to Bay Springs Lake. It goes through there and then it runs down into Bay Springs Lake. And there was a lot of points right there in that area. And it was about 10 miles from the boat ramp, 15 miles, maybe not that far. I think it was about 10 miles to, from the boat ramp, seven miles, something like that. So I was going to hit that. And that's what I did. So as you can see there on the, the picture there, Bear Creek and the Yellow Creek were my two primary areas. Those are the areas I focused on in practice. Learned as much about them as possible. That is what I like to do in practice. I'll talk about that in another video, but I don't like to try to fish the whole lake. I try to just focus on one or two areas of the lake and break those areas down unless they just don't have no fish. And then you just got to abandon that and try to figure something out. That's kind of what happened, and you know, um, down there in the team championship was I just the first day of practice. I wanted to break one area down, and it just didn't work out. And then I tried to go somewhere else, and it didn't work out there. So we just had to scrap everything. Okay, so 
I started off in Yellow Creek the first morning, and I started off there. I had a plan. I found some practice fishing the points there. And what they was, they were shallow points, as you can see. It's kind of hard to see on there, but they're shallower than what they look like. They came out a little further than what it looks like, and I knew that from previous experiences anyway. When they're in post-spawn, they like to move out on these shallower points after they spawn out. I didn't know if that was going to work in Tennessee or not, but I know it works around here in the Ozarks and on these lakes in the Midwest. So Yellow Creek there in the first picture, there was the two good points in that first picture that are circled in red. As you can see, shallow points or underwater shoals, whatever you want to call them there, they go under the water and they come out quite a ways. And they were sitting on these areas to feed up after they spawned out. They just move out here and they relax. And that's why I was throwing a shaky head and I was throwing two different lures down there. I was throwing a quarter ounce shaky head and I was throwing a green pumpkin. I had the Dell uh, green pumpkin magnum finesse worm. I was dipping the tail in chartreuse and I was also throwing a six inch, six inch big hammer salt shaker worm. And then I'd also caught them and practiced some of the fish that were feeding up in the mornings. I didn't get none of those in the tournament, but I did catch them in the practice on this little Iowa that you'll see in this next video. I caught a four pounder there in practice and I caught it on a, a 2K jigs uh, sub blade uh, chatterbait and I had a three inch big hammer as the trailer on that and that was in both of them in shad color. And then, well that's uh, it's more of a whitish color, it's not called shad and big hammer, it's called shad and the sub blade, the 2K jigs uh, sub blade, which is a chatterbait. And it's not, it's, I forget the name of that color I was throwing. And I dipped that tail in chartreuse as well on that big hammer to get that bite. So, and then in the second picture here, you'll see four areas there. And they're the points or the shoals. And they're the red areas circled there. And I fished all these areas, like I said, with the shaky head and the magnum finesse worm and the big hammer salt shaker worm. And then I kind of mixed that, the salt shaker worm in there. And I fish this because they like to feed up on those bigger lures after spawn, same way pre-spawn. So if you're throwing that magnum finesse worm or the big hammer salt shaker worm, the, the salt shaker worm works better when they're on the beds. And then the magnum finesse worm works good when they're on beds, pre-spawn, and post-spawn because they're looking to feed up. And that bigger profile worm, plus they can see it better in there because Pickwick was stained, so they could see it a little better. So this area right here... Uh, let me get down here in my notes so I can see. I got the pictures here when I'm talking in the video. So right here, I started off that morning, and I don't know if uh, you guys will learn from watching my videos. I hate fishing cloudy conditions. I'm still yet to really get that figured out. Um, that's what happened down there in the team championship. It was cloudy conditions, and I really struggled, which I really struggled for some reason during that period. And I thought it's because they were suspended why I struggled, but I found out at the team championship, uh, now that I got front-facing sonar, that's not the case. So I'm still struggling with that. But So I was throwing the shaky head, and the first fish in the morning right there, I forget which point it was on. It was on one of those southern points, one of the south banks. I missed one. I think it was the one closest to the island right there, the one just back to the, be the east. And I missed one there, and he jumped and he spit the hook on me. And that was the first fish. That was in about the first 10 minutes or so. And I was like, okay, well, you know. That that that's it. that happens. You lose fish. Okay. And then my co-angler, I think we went to the next point. I think it was the one across from the marina up on the north, which is in the first picture, I do believe, right there. And I missed a second fish, but I missed this fish because I just started throwing braid to fluorocarbon. I just started tying the Alberto knot. And some pointers with that is when you're using the Alberto knot, be sure to make sure that is tight. That, that that's the main thing, is getting that good and tight. And don't cut it too short or that'll pull out. I just hope I learned that the hard way. I lost one fish doing that. So at that point, I lost two keepers. And that was still early. My co, I believe he caught one or two on that point right there by the marina. Now, I did spend a little more time because I just wanted to fish those two areas. But it was kind of raining. So I didn't want to go run the next 10 miles down to Bear Creek. So I stayed in that area a little longer that morning. And I missed, well, how many did I miss? Yeah. I missed the two, I missed another one over three pounds, and it was on that point as well, right there. That one, no, that one was across from the marina, just one of the points over to the further 
back it'd be to the south and um well the way it's setting up yeah there but it would be the ones on the top which would be the north side or the south side but it'd be on the west it's kind of confusing right in there the way the lake turns so i missed another one in that area so i missed three fish already so my morning wasn't going real good they just weren't getting hooked up on that shaky head and then i had that one you know pull the alberto knot off so and my co-angler had ended up uh, catching two or three, and he was throwing a Carolina rig. That's what I should have done, was I should have threw the Carolina rig. I should have had that rigged up ready to go, especially in post-spawn. I should have known that, but I didn't do it. But, oh, well, you know, yeah, you love, you learn. That's what happened there on the first spot. And that's my notes in there telling me to talk about the big fish. I've already talked about that with you guys. Okay, so now... Bear Creek. Bear Creek, I had three main areas in Bear Creek. As you can see there, I got them all circled. There's one the further to the north, there's one to the south, um, the south and on the west, and then there's one farthest south on the west. And that one I actually did not fish in the tournament. I should have went in there, but they were on beds. I don't know if they would have still been in there because they were pulling out pretty fast after they spawned. But the first area I liked the most there and that's where I caught the most fish in the throughout the tournament and had even worse luck coming up here you guys will find that out so I pull into this first pocket that's closest to the main channel right there and the first thing I'll talk about is look at the orange right there because I pulled up there there were I mean there were boats all over the place in here there was six or seven boats just all within a 200 yard range there and that's they i wanted to fish the bank on the north that point in the north but there was a guy fishing on it so i couldn't pull up there so i took the point to the south started fishing there and i did catch one right where that red is i caught one of the keepers there i did catch one in practice there as well that was my first keeper so i had one keeper in the boat and i'm like okay okay so things are starting to settle down and you know i got the, got the first keeper in the boat Let's settle down here, and then a guy came in, and he went almost up to the point, and then he left. He didn't catch nothing there, and he was fishing out. A lot of guys were fishing out because that is where they was, but there was still some up there spawning. And so I cast up there where that orange is, and it was closer to the bank. It was only about two or three foot off the bank. That guy that came right through there before, he was fishing, casting about 10 foot off the bank is where he was actually casting to. So I cast up there with that shaky head. That was with the Magnum Finesse Worm. And I hooked it, and then, you know, I was like, the co anglers like, is it a good one? I was like, I think it's pretty good, you know. It's fighting, and then I seen it jump. And it was it was every bit of eight pounds, and that, that might be doing it lower. It was, it could have been double digits. This thing was a giant. I'm not telling stories either, but I know it sounds crazy. Everybody's got their little stories in tournaments, but so it jumped, and I know how big it was because I jumped, I think, four times is how many times it jumped. My heart was racing, better to jump out of my chest, but... So I'm like, okay, and then it came up to the boat. Had we had I been able to use a net, I could have netted it. It was right there, that close to me. And then it made one last run. I'm like, okay, well, you know, I got it hooked. It's jumped four times. Now I'm throwing spinning gear. I was throwing a, what was I throwing? Thirty pound braid, and I was throwing ten pound fluorocarbon to that fins braid. Uh, fins wind tamer is the 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 oh, the braid I was throwing, and then the fluorocarbon I believe at that time. Um, I was still throwing P-line, I believe is what it was I was throwing. So I didn't break. I knew yeah, my drag was set good. I was pulling the drag out. I knew it wasn't going to break the fish off. So I just said, okay, let her wear herself out, and then we'll get her in. And then after she came right up to the boat and made that last run, she, it pulled off. And at that point, I, you know, that just, that just devastated me. You know, I just lost an 8 to 10-pound fish, and I'm like, man, you know, this, this day is just it's ruined by this point it was 11 o'clock or noon i'd be in at 4 30 or 5 it was pretty late flight that day when i got out of there and i'm just like well oh. and my co was like you know what so it's okay just just keep calm you know you're around fish you'll get your limit and i'm just like i don't know man you know it's everything's not working out and he's just like then he admitted to he's like yeah yeah it's just it's not your day today so i still fought through it my brain wasn't quite there so but right in that area, I'll go back to this area too later, but the purple there is where my co-angler caught two. We came back to this area later, and he caught two. He got two of them right there and missed one where that purple is up on the north. 
And that was a good bank right there, especially for that Carolina rig. My co-angler, I believe, was sitting in like the top 20 after day one, if I remember right. So he did really good. And had I got the fish in the boat that I'd missed on day one, I would have been inside the top 20 easy, possibly the top 10. That was just, I mean, it didn't look good on paper. It ended up like 200 and something. And then people are just like, oh, sure, everybody's got their stories. But it is true. I wouldn't be here on social media on my YouTube channel explaining this. But it's just... It, everything did not go right for me in my first Bassmaster tournament. I don't know if it was nerves. I don't know what it was. My luck. I got terrible luck. It happens. But, you know, you fight through that. It's just adversity. So, now let's get back in. I ran, well, let's just cover this whole area here. So, the second day, um, because that's pretty much it that happened on the first day. Other than I ran a couple areas and I came back to the same exact spot on the first. And I caught my second keeper out of that same exact spot. So that was my two keepers I brought in to weigh in. They were just little bitty line burners too. So let's get to day two now. Okay, so day two, I run in and I run to my first area there up in Yellow Creek. Fished it for two hours, I think it was, right around there, an hour or two. I just hit uh, two good points where I caught fish the day before. And there was nothing there. I had zero fish at this point, And I'm like, oh man, okay, here we go. You know, this isn't good. So then I pull back into Bear Creek, that first area of Bear Creek, catch my first keeper. And then as I'm getting that fish off the hook, my co-angler catches one. So he gets one in the boat right off that same area. I cast back up there. I catch my second keeper. So I'm like, okay, we got a rhythm going here. Okay. So let's keep it going. And let's, so let's keep it going. Sorry, my son's trying to come in here. I got to keep him out, my little two-year-old. So let's keep it going. So I didn't get anything else out of that area at that time. I'll add the two. So um, I ran around. Let me see here exactly where I caught them. Yes, the red with the purple. Or I'm trying to see my notes here. I think it's on the north side. I got to remember where I put them there. Yeah, I caught two of them there right after that on day two. So that was right after that. So that, it gave me four keepers just right there out of that first pocket. That first pocket produced so many fish for me. They were just moving in and out of there to spawn and moving back out and feeding. And I, yeah, it was off of that uh, flat. It's just right back there in that cove. You'll see it on there where I caught that up on the north side where I caught those other two. And then um, the green, the coin where, like I said, he caught one on day two right there. Now, the second area, I had found it in practice, but I did not fish it on day one. That is to the further south in Bear Creek, and that is the one on the west bank over there. What it is, it's kind of a channel swing bank, and I caught one back in that pocket back in there on the bed. I did not really go back in there in the tournament, but there was a channel swing bank just out to the edge of there. It's kind of a bluffier style bank, and I really liked this area, and I caught one there... Uh, in practice and I caught one back in that pocket in practice and now that south further out of that pocket that's that steeper bluffier bank I was talking about and I caught my fifth keeper there on day two that's where I finally got my limit and I was like okay so I can relax now you know at least I got a limit so I don't look as terrible it probably wasn't going to save nothing unless I could sack 20 pounds so on to my third area that's I did not fish this in the tournament because they, most of these were on beds and I figured they would have been moved out. I probably could have picked a couple off of it. But that was Mill Creek Marina is the name of it. And there was a lot of them. I think I caught three or four in practice there or shook them off in practice. I didn't catch them all. Shook a lot of them off in there in practice. And around that island right there in that little point, they were really stacked in there. I probably could have got some in the tournament, but none of them really felt real big shaking them off. There wasn't much size there to them, so... Now, day two, I should have ran there on day one, tried to get more, but my co-angler really wanted me to fish further off than what I was. He was really surprised about how shallow they was. He was thinking they was further out. So now the third area is an area I wish I actually found it in practice, but I didn't find what was there and what made it so good until the second day. So I told my co-angler, I was like, you know, my only chance here 
is to get a big bag. So I got to leave this area because, you know, I'm only catching two pounders in this area other than that giant one I missed on day one. Everything else didn't have no size there. So I was like, well, I got to get out of Bear Creek and I got to run back up here because I did have a couple three pounders. But I said on my way back, I was like, let me stop in here and hit this point right here and see what's going on there because I caught one there in practice. So right there, it is Fred Hollow is the name of it. It's just a little bitty hollow there, and you would never expect it to be what it is. You get in there, and the red right there is a circle, and on the Navionics, it doesn't show that that point is a long point coming out there, and like a shoal, an underwater point that comes out there a long ways. But what made this so great was there was milfoil out there. And that milfoil was out there to 12 to 20 foot of water. And I don't know if you guys know anything about fishing down in the south of the Tennessee River on Pickwick or Chickamauga or Gunnersville. But when you find, especially Pickwick, if you find that grass, especially early in the year like this, that holds them fish. So, and I didn't really know it was there, but I fished there and I was dragging that. I fished out a little deeper and I was dragging that shaky head through it. And I need to do a technique on how I fish that shaky head out a little deeper. I drag it. Uh, real slow and kind of shake it a little bit. I call it the scooter shake. It's kind of the technique I call it. And then I kept feeling that. And I was like, what is that? You know, it felt like something spongy. And I was like, what is that down there? Because I didn't have the front facing sonar yet. Um, I really didn't really decide. Didn't have much of a side imaging unit or anything yet. Didn't really know how to work none of that crap because I'm not really an electronics guy, but I'm getting it figured out. So and I was like, what is that sponginess? And I was like, I kind of felt like a fish running with it. But I'm like, no, it kind of feels like a log. I ain't really sure. And then one bit it and I caught it. And then I got it up. And that was my first keeper I caught out of there. And I called one of my fish out. And I realized that it was milfoil. Once I got that fish up, it was wrapped up in the milfoil. And I realized it was about that long. At least the pieces hanging off the bass were about, oh, maybe a foot, 18 inches, two foot right in there. 18 inches to two foot. And it was off the end of this flat. It was, a, it was a, I don't know if you grass bed, what you want to call it, but it was milfoil out there. And they say you find the grass on Pickwick, you can find the fish. I just wish I would have found that on day one, but I did not find that. I found it in practice. I just missed over it. It's so crazy how you can just skip over those fish and be right there around them. Well, I ended up catching four keepers here in 30 minutes just on that. Um, I caught two of them on the Big Hammer a uh, salt shaker worm and two of them on the magnum finesse worm, both green pumpkin with the del tail dipped. Another thing uh, before I forget, if you're in the south, throw green pumpkin. I don't do real good myself here in the Midwest on green pumpkin, but anytime I've been to the south, throw green pumpkin. It, it, it works in the south. Pickwick, Tennessee River, I've done good. Pickwick on green pumpkin. Also, when I was at the team championship on Hartwell, they love green pumpkin there as well. So green pumpkin in the South for me anyway, works great. Everybody says it works everywhere. So far, the South is where it works the best for me. So I caught those four keepers there in 30 minutes. And then I could have sat there and kept catching them, but they were just the same size. They were about two and a half pounds. I ended up weighing in 12 something. And then I had uh, three dead fish that cost me, oh, 12 ounces. I had just over 12 pounds. Ended up with 11.4, 11, 11, 11 11.5 is what I ended up with on day two. So I had just over 12 pounds. So I ran back up there to Yellow Creek thinking maybe I could get a couple three pounders. I did miss a four and a half there in practice or caught a four and a half there in practice. And well, I missed another big one in practice too. That was about that size. And so I was going up there, maybe, you know, maybe I could get a couple four pounders and at least get up there. Probably wasn't going to get a check. Maybe it was tough on everybody else. Maybe I would get a check, but most likely not, but at least get my confidence back. So I got out of there, ran to Yellow Creek, didn't catch no more keepers. So that was the end of my day. Ended up um, weighing in on day one. I weighed in three pounds, eight ounces, and that had me in 206 place out of 225 boats, I think was there, somewhere around there. Not good, but absolutely terrible, especially for the day and how everything went, you know. Should have had a top 10 bag, but didn't have it, and unfortunately, nobody's going to believe that story, but that is the story. That's what happened. If my co-angler, if you could talk to him, he would let you know all about it, so <laughs> he witnessed it all, and he witnessed the giant bass. So, on the second day, I ended up, um, you know, bringing in 
the five fish and I had 11 pounds, five ounces after the 12 ounces of deductions because I had the three dead fish in my live well. Post spawn fish are very difficult to keep alive. I ended up putting a bubble box aerator in my live well after that. I just had an aerator before that or a live well pump that ran the water in. So I ended up putting an aftermarket one in there to keep them and I haven't lost a fish since then. I lost their post spawn. I did, did lose some at Truman this past year, uh, but post spawn fish are very difficult to keep alive. Even if you have ice, anything like that is difficult. G juice, any, you know, any stuff to put in there is still difficult. So I ended up weighing 11 pounds, five ounces. I ended up at 177th place at 225. Terrible finish, but what I learned about the lake for the future, I learned what to do next. I learned what to look for on ledges and what a ledge exactly is. I didn't quite understand that. Now I know, I did find out that the tournament was won on a lure similar to what I was throwing on a shaky hit. So I was on the right path, just had to move around and understand the water a little bit more, which the first day, uh, the second day, I did weigh in uh, with uh, without the deductions. I would have weighed in, I think it was like the 92nd biggest bag. So it wasn't terrible. I've been right there, just a little better than middle of the pack. And I was still a little bit better than the, you know, the packet. I had 100 biggest stringer with the 11 pounds, 5 ounces. So just right in the middle, not where I needed to be. But had I had that day one weight and got all those fish in, I would have been right in there in the top 40 right with those guys. And I mean, these are like top touring professionals that were fishing there too. So, so you know, that kind of gave me confidence and told me that, you know, I'm doing the right thing here. I'm on the right path. So that helped me in my first Bassmaster Open. And it did take, on day one, it was 19 pounds, 3 ounces for a top 10. And had I got every fish in the boat that I'd missed, I would have had around 18 to 20 pounds. So, I mean, I would have had a chance at my first top 10 on a day one. So I would have been right there with them guys. But it just did not work, and that's how things do happen. I mean, and you just got to build through that. It's the adversity. You can't let that get you down. I mean, that that's what you got to keep a solid, you know, mindset Keep your head up and go out just like I did the second day. Went out, got a limit, reset myself, said I'm doing the right thing. They're there. I just got to get them in the boat. And the sun came out. Like I said, I had this problem at Hartwell as two when it was cloudy with that shaky head. They don't want to bite it as well. I don't know why. I got to get that figured out. Anybody that's watching these videos that knows why, if you want to comment and let me know why, that would be awesome because I wish I could figure that out myself. When it's cloudy, they don't bite that shaky head as well. I know when they're on beds, they just pick it up and move it. But at Pickwick, a lot of those were fish off the bank. They were post spawners, so it didn't have anything to do with the beds. So I'm not sure exactly what was going on. I know that big one I missed that was the 8-pounder, eight 8-10 eight to 10 pounder. I know that one was on a bed, but the other ones were not. They were off the bank. And where I went wrong was I just should have thrown a Carolina rig on those points as well. And that would have helped me on day one because they were a little suspended. That would have helped me get them in the boat a little better. So hopefully this video helped you guys and get you guys, if you guys ever go to the Tennessee River, it'll give you an idea of what to do and what you can do to catch fish. Like I said, this, this pattern is going to work in early spring. This pattern is going to work in the spring. And this pattern is going to work in post-spawn. And I still think even in the summer they'll be there, but the ledges are your best bet. Pretty much you get post-spawn on that lake and pre-spawn. You want to get those ledges, but you could still do good running this pattern, guys. So don't let it fool you that you can't do that. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this content. I'm enjoying putting it out there. I'm enjoying talking to you guys. I love talking fishing and doing this. I get to talk fishing with you guys. So like I said, going back in the past, that was my first Bassmaster tournament. I did not get to finish that season up. Because in June, I had to have uh, neck surgery or actually surgery. They had to cut the back of my head open and remove a bone out of the back of my head. It was a minor brain surgery, if there's any such thing as a minor brain surgery. But that ended my season that year. So I could not finish the opens. And I uh, give a big shout out to Bass for giving me all my deposits back because of that unfortunate situation. So I was looking forward to finishing that. And that was one of my times when I could fish the three have a shot you know at making that Bassmaster Classic so I uh, have another shot at winning and making the elites and possibly being in there but unfortunately 
that didn't happen because of that. And now you guys know my feelings. Anybody that's watched me on the nine tournaments to fish the Open. But we'll get into that on another point. That's a very controversial subject that we don't want to talk about in this video. So thank you guys for tuning in. Hopefully this stuff helps you.